Welcome back to Turning Hard Times to Good Times. I am your host, Jay Taylor, and I'm really pleased to have with me for the first time Thomas Coughlin. Thomas is the Chief Executive Officer of Allocated Bullion Exchange, and he has worked in the investment funds management and bullion industries for approximately 15 years. His professional portfolio management career spans the foundation of the boutique investment company Track Financial to the establishment of a highly successful absolute return fund. And Thomas has uh, dedicated a significant part of his career working collaboratively to build the complex system of a cross-border international bullion market with an extensive global network of central bankers, brokers, fund managers, and advisors. His experience, extensive network, and broad uh, knowledge of capital markets have enabled him to deliver exceptional value and insights to all the stakeholders. Thank you for joining me today, Thomas. Thank you very much for having me on the show, Jack. Really, uh, very interesting and timely, of course, uh, I, I believe, uh, given the travails of the of the global monetary system. And I know there's a lot of innovations now uh, using modern technology uh, to try to provide a more efficient means of, of transactions and a safer uh, means of, of storing wealth and, and a safer monetary system, because Lord knows uh, the financial system has not been repaired since 2008-2009. So but you have something new, and what we want to learn today is what the Kinesis monetary system is all about. And I guess people can learn more about your product, uh, about your service at kinesis.money. Is that right, Thomas? That's correct, yes. That's our website. Plenty of information on there as well. A lot of information there, and we want to get into uh, uh, to that as much as possible within the next 20 minutes or so. Uh, first of all, is the Kinesis Monetary System, is that a product of Allocated Bullion Exchange? Is that out of that corporation? Basically, the team that developed ABX, so Allocated Bullion Exchange, um, yeah, also developed Kinesis. And we, we at Kinesis have inherited uh, all the technological Development that has been done by ABX over the years since since it was founded in 2011. Um, all the expertise, I guess, and relationships and partnerships that were built in the precious metals industry um, at the institutional level, but also um, basically going downstream to the the retail customer as well. And um, yeah, so to answer your question, yes, it was born from the team. ABX doesn't own Kinesis. But the team developed it. Could you take just a few seconds to talk about Allocated Bullion Exchange? Um, just a little bit of a background. How long have they been in business and, and what is the company about? So, um, yeah, ABX is an um, institutional spot physical exchange for precious metals. Uh, it's a global market as well. So uh, we offer uh, basically trade um, and in connecting buyers and sellers um, all around the world in our seven different vaults, and we're rolling that out to be nine different vaults shortly. But, um, you know, it's, it's been built out to be – it's an institutional exchange, so it's full sort of like institutional grade, everything, the architecture, the infrastructure. It's all institutional grade, just like, I guess, the New York Stock Exchange, but uh, but, but for precious metals. I see. Uh, but Kinesis is, is going to also be for very much involved for, for uh, the retail people, I guess. That's that's correct, yeah. So, I mean, um, the other thing with ABX, it's a centralized market, so it, it stands in the middle of every trade, whereas what Kinesis is, it, um, it's, it's adopting the blockchain, which ultimately connects, uh, you know, end party with the next end party through the blockchain network, which I'm happy to explain. I want you to do that, but it, it, in a summary explanation of the Kinesis monetary website uh, it, it sort of summarizes the system. You suggest that it is an evolutionary gold standard, uh, and then you talk about Kinesis as, a, as being an asset-backed digital currency combining uh, blockchain, as you said, technology with gold and silver. First of all, uh, you know, it's, it's as a person who doesn't know very much about blockchain or, or cryptocurrencies and things like that, for the benefit of me as well as my listeners, can you explain what blockchain is? Certainly. Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, I mean, ultimately, the way that I see <clears throat> the blockchain working and the benefits that it provide, it's a, I guess, electronic network 
whereby um, it breaks down so many different barriers to entry all around the world. Suddenly, um, someone on one part of the world, let's take New York, can immediately connect with, say, someone in Istanbul or someone in Sydney without knowing who they are, without uh, needing to, to have that understanding or trust and connect with them uh, anonymously and understand that the, the trade will be settled um, or transaction settled um, um, yeah, if they, if, they, if they engage in that transaction. So um, it, it's, it's really, it's, it's an amazing uh, technology whereby it just, it, it facilitates basically, it, it's called a trustless system. This, this, uh, this trade all around the world with different people all around the world breaks down all borders, all barriers to entry and connects everyone together and peer to peer. So where exchanges normally operate, they have like a clearinghouse that sits in the middle, which like guarantees the good delivery of a trade. Whereas through this system, we can go back to basically, you know, bilateral trade and all connect up with one another and understand that 100% the uh, the trade will be will be settled so that's that's what the the amazing thing of it is and you know the new technology coming out and the new networks coming out are highly efficient um, um, highly efficient on speed but also cost as well so it's it's really disruptive towards obviously the banking system and the incumbent uh, monetary system as well because you no longer have to wait sort of like two days or even up to five days for your for your money to clear through basically the the global banking system. Um, here, say for example, with us, it's two to five seconds um, transaction settlement times, and and um, each of our blockchain networks handles a minimum of three thousand transactions per second. So. Um, it's highly efficient. It's highly efficient, and, and though uh, what I think makes this blockchain product that you're talking about, uh, the Kinesis Monetary System, different from some is that it's attached, as I understand it, and this is a bit mysterious to me, uh, it's attached to, you know, blockchain we can't see or touch, but it's attached to something that is very tangible, like gold or silver, as I understand it, right? That's correct. So, I mean, we've focused in on being um, secure, efficient, and rewarding, both for every participant's like, individual benefit, but also for the benefit of uh, our network collectively. So, I mean, what, what we've ultimately done is focused in on what makes money successful. I mean, this is really the sort of vision and passion behind it all. I'm a bit of a monetary historian myself. And um, and this was actually really the, the the vision of seeing change in the monetary system, which which drove the the foundation of ABX as well. And what we so I mean, what I see as making money, and no, it's it's not what I see. It's if you look back through history, what the primary principles are that makes money successful is one, it needs to be an efficient medium of exchange. And this is this is really what the blockchain has done. It's done it in a transparent and secure way as well. So everything's transparent. You can see everything going on in the blockchain by logging by logging on in the internet or whatever and you see it all. Um, and so the, the 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 new modern day innovative technology has improved um, the efficiency of the medium of exchange element. We, at Kinesis, we've also integrated into the incumbent banking system as well with our debit cards, with online banking facilities and that sort of thing. But also, um, we've also really focused on uh, the other major element that makes money successful, and that's effective store of value. And the greatest store of value that the world's ever seen is gold uh, and, the mon and, and silver as well. So throughout the ages, gold's held its value. Um, it's been relatively stable, and um, it's effectively incorruptible. There's no debt attached to it or anything like that. So um, we've just taken gold and silver and basically put it into the blockchain and into uh, monetary units. So it's actually – it's what we offer is actually just divisible units of gold and divisible units of silver – and it's physical and sitting in the vaults, and it's utilising tried and tested 
um, uh, sec secure facilities and quality assured facilities um, that ABX offers. So, and there's a third dimensional element which goes beyond any monetary system or or platform out there, any kind of currency platform, and that revolves around this incentivize yield system. So we we have the theory behind it all is this: well, one, everyone is rewarded for participating in our system in one way or another, whether it be actively or passively. And we understand that we had to defeat a principle called Gresham's Law to be a successful currency. Basically, when presented with choice of using one currency over another currency, then we wanted to incentivize the use of our currency. So, for example, if I have the choice of using US dollars to, to buy my coffee or I have the choice of Kinesis to buy my coffee – then I want the I want the choice to be Kinesis. So basically, we put together this um, multifaceted yield system, whereby people entering the system are rewarded, and then people using the money in the system are rewarded. So we focused in attracting capital in, and then basically putting it into motion. So getting people to use it. And that's really where our name comes from, kinesis. Kinesis in Greek means movement. I really like the biological definition of it, which is undirectional movement from stimulus, because that really, that really sums us up and also um, contrasts us against the existing monetary and banking system, which is basically, it's very directional, the money movements. It comes out from the central bank, goes through the commercial banks, lent out, and basically, you know, goes back in um, the same way that it came. Um, it's very directional now. We, we see ourselves as being a fair and honest system, which um, everyone is treated the same, ultimately, and rewarded according to their own participation within the system. Mm -hmm. uh, Thomas, let me just ask you, you know, I, I just, this reminds me a little bit of gold money. I happen to have an account with gold money. Uh, I buy a little bit of gold. I keep it there. And if I want to, I can sell the gold and buy dollars and put it on my prepaid, uh, on, on my debit card, uh, my debit MasterCard, or, or actually a Visa. Then I take it to the restaurant and I use it and I spend my dollars uh, my thinking there is why in the world do I want to load, do I want to sell my gold, especially now when it's so low, why do I want to sell my gold and buy dollars? Why not spend the dollars that I have in my pocket and not spend gold? But as I understand it, you, you are providing an incentive for people to want to get rid of their fiat currency, buy your um, KVGs, uh, KVTs they're called, I guess, the units of that you call your is that is that what you call your? Uh, no, we at the ticker codes for our, um, our gold and silver back currencies are KAU and KAG. Right, AU uh, for gold the, the and KVT. AG for silver. Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. Right. Yes. And, and so, the, as I think you were explaining, why if I were owning some KAU or KAG, why I might not want to do what I'm doing with my gold money. A Visa card that is not selling the gold or not using. It. Do I sell the gold when I use? Do I sell the gold and have to buy a currency when I when I load my debit card under your system? Um, as far as the the mechanics of our system goes, everything is streamlined and automated. So if you were to utilize our uh, debit card, then you you could be holding say. Uh, um, you could be holding your your money in basically um, lots of different currencies, should you wish, or you could just be holding it in Kinesis, and it would make sense to be holding it in Kinesis because our yield system should uh, should reward you for doing so um, t to a, a multi like a, 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 with a yield which will be a multiple of any other bank deposit. It should be at least. Um, so, and if you are, and you go to a merchant and you spend, then there'll be actually just a, uh, an automatic conversion done to the native currency of the merchant within the system. Because we basically have set up all the 
all the the mechanics to be able to do that, we have an, you know an exchange embedded in there in the blockchain, whereby it will automatically basically convert say Kinesis into the native currency. And so as as you spend, you actually don't have to top up anything. Like so say so, say so, say so if you're you know spending in US dollars, you don't need to transfer money to a US dollar account and then spend. You could hold everything in Kinesis should you wish, and you just spend and go around the world like a global card using it in any different currency. Um, as far as, yeah, what you were saying, like why would you, uh, you know, use Kinesis? So you don't, want, you don't want to spend gold at this point in time. You'd prefer to spend your US dollars. And this goes back to Gresham's War, where money drives out good. If, if, if you basically, you know, make an investment decision to hold gold or you favour gold um, for its value over... Uh, US dollars, then effectively, um, why would yeah, why would you want to spend that gold? You value it higher than US dollars. Um, so we, what we've done is tried to defeat that concept by creating this incentivized yield system. So you can hold gold um, in our system, um, but also if if it comes to actually you know paying for a transaction, you're rewarded for it. Whereas you're not rewarded um, for using US dollars. Once once you spend it, um, it's spent. It's gone. Whereas with us, we'll actually um, provide benefit to actually use our currency. And I'm happy to explain that because it's a, it's an entirely new concept that actually might take a little a little bit for people. Yeah, yeah. I think Thomas. Um, unfortunately, we don't have time probably to get into the various mechanics of, of your yield, but you have mentor yield, depositors yield, holder yield, recruiter yield. That's explained on your website. Uh, we, we just don't have, I mean, it would get too, con- too, much, too much time, I think, but people should check it out um, because this, this, I think this changes things. And so there'd be no need for me to go and, and get online and sell my gold and, and buy dollars before I load my debit card. I could just take my Kinesis uh, account and use my debit card and then it would it would uh, it, it would sell the gold and cha- change the currencies. I don't have to do that. I don't have to do that step. And then, as I understand it, then there is a reason why I would want to spend my gold in your system, whereas there is no reason uh, in the gold money system. Yeah, that's that, that's correct. So, I mean, under, under the minty yield, the people create their own currency. So you swap your money in, and then you create your own currency. And then once you send, spend, or sell it, then you actually start to receive a yield. So first you have to use it to actually get a yield, and the yield's very attractive. Basically, it's a sharing of the transaction fees. That's how our yield works. So it's non-debt-based. It's a complete sharing of the transaction fees. Yeah. A couple more questions uh, with the time we have left yet. Uh, it's my understanding that your gold or silver, your KAU or your KAG, uh, would be allocated. It's stored somewhere, and it's stored, I think you mentioned, seven or nine different vaults, uh, uh, different countries, different locations around the world uh, where the allocated bullion exchange stores this gold. Is that right? That's correct, yes. And so uh, so it is allocated. That is, Jay Taylor's gold, it's there, sitting there for me somewhere. It's it's uh, 100% allocated. So we will have uh, a, a, basically a transactional currency for gold and silver. Now, the way that that works is it's allocated title to like the end user, the ultimate beneficial owner. Um, but it's in divisible units. So, but what what it is, it's allocated physical gold and allocated physical silver, basically. But put in like currency uh, uh, divisibility to effectively monetize it. Um, we also have wholesale contracts in there, as we call them, which are allocated and segregated. So this is where you actually buy like whole bars of. For gold, it's like a 100 gram bar or a kilo bar. And you actually got the serial numbers and everything and the, the hallmark, the brand. So, yeah, it's, it's all allocated 100%. Yeah, that's a very important aspect. Just, uh, so just give me an idea. Let's say I go to a restaurant and uh, I spend my debit card um, and I use, let's say I spend, you know, I have a party and I spend $500 for a few of my friends and we have a, go to a very nice restaurant in New York and we spend 500 bucks. What might I get back in terms of a yield on, on that? And is the yield paid in gold or silver? It's uh, it's it's paid according to the currency that 
you use. So say if if you're um, holding it in silver, then you'll get paid in silver. If you're holding it in gold, you'll get paid in gold. And so if once um, before you spend your money, you will be receiving the holder's yield, which acts just like a bank deposit. But after you receive it, and if you minted that currency, um, then uh, you will receive basically um, a sharing of the transaction fees. So the way that it works is if you spend 500 then that is calculated at a proportional rate to all other money spent in the system, and then you get uh, a portion of the fees back. The thing is, um, so it's, it's all based on velocity. And say, for example, I mean, currency is the, is the most liquid asset in all of the world. Like, it's ultimately money, and money's moving constantly. You'll give $20 to someone, they'll give it to someone else, and it might even change hand 10 times in a day. The US dollars, the daily velocity rate of the, of the, of the monetary supply is 38%. And, um, yeah, you wouldn't know it, but 38% of the, of all money out there, it's changing hands every single day. So we've taken a much more conservative figure and then built out yields around that. And uh, say, for example, for the holder, um, based on like a, I think it's a, a 30% velocity rate, which, um, uh, you know, it's entirely possible for us to get to because we're incentivizing velocity. Um, they'll receive like, a, I think it's about a 9.5% yield per year. But for an active minter who is um, – and it's it, it's something that you can do. You can create the currency, basically just buy gold. It gets emitted into the blockchain, decentralized system, and then sell it and then revolve your capital, should you wish, and you build up a larger and larger share of the transaction fees out there um, to, to, to basically benefit from. And what that means, it, what it is, you gain a yield forever. So um, that money that you spent, that sits in the system, as and and the system understands that you spent that, and you'll re- you'll receive a, a sharing of the transaction fees in the entire system forever. As it as it continues to turn over, Thomas, as as it continues to yeah, the velocity. Okay, just really limited amount of time left here yet. Um, I need to ask you uh, tax implications. So, for example, in the United States, if I buy gold and use it to, to buy, you know, and the, and the value of the gold goes up, I have to pay Uncle Sam uh, a, a portion of that gain that I made. That's just the law, the way it is. So what about account of, accountability of, of gains and losses in this system? Is it something the system provides or is it something incumbent on me as a user of the system to keep track of? Okay, so, yeah, I mean, we're, we're not responsible for your um, tax obligation. So or, for, or for accounting of for accounting of gains or losses, right? No, of course, and that, that's not our responsibility. That's really your responsibility, and, and um, yeah, that's, and we're not tax advisors either. But, um, yeah, I mean, the system will provide all, all necessary information for you to uphold any of your, you know, tax responsibilities, um, to be able to, you know, calculate all of that. And, um, yeah, I mean, with regards to um, um, our solution and, and, you know, it being a, a monetary system, then that's that's something that, you'll, I guess, your users need to take um, tax advice on from their accountant. Okay. Um, so with just about a minute left here, uh, maybe summing up, um, does that, do you need a maximum? Is there a certain amount of money you need? What do you need to really to get started at all and, and maybe put your big toe in the water to check out the system and see if it's something you want to add more to over time? Certainly. So, I mean, we just opened our public sale for the Kinesis Velocity tokens. And this is really the, the, the capital raising um, um, token which allows people to get invested in the success of our system for the future. And, and feel to be part of the system. And we've now raised um, over $55 million worth. And that's the first that's, that's the first logical step. And then in November, we open um, investment up to, you know, gold and silver currencies and actually participation in the system. But uh, if, if you like what you hear, then, um, you know, um, join us on our website, have a look, do your own research. And, um, yeah, please feel free to participate 
in our Kinesis Velocity token. It's uh, really a very interesting concept. Uh, I think, you know, these things take time for people to become comfortable with. Um, maybe one last word. How can you assure people that, you know, there's been a lot of frauds and things that have gone wrong in the past. How can you assure people, take, take a minute if you need to, to tell our listeners why they should feel safe uh, in, uh, in participating? Sure. Well, I mean, the, the first thing that um, um, I think that should bring comfort and confidence in our system to, to your listeners is the fact that um, it's the team at ABX, uh, a company founded in 2011 with an unblemished track record, um, has, have built out and we're utilising the ABX system ultimately for the storage of the metals um, and... and, and um, well, the end trade of the metals as well as they're basically the physical handling of them, and um, they're sc- they're stored in secure vaults all around the world, um, which are operated by um, basically the the most reputable third party vaulting providers. There's a quality assurance framework which requires you know multiple layers of audit and verification, and and ultimately the trade of, that goes through Kinesis. It operates on the blockchain, a highly transparent and secure system, whereby you 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 know um, basically w- um, what you think you're getting, you are getting, and um, and that's really the way that it works, and that's the powerful thing with the blockchain. We'll have to leave it go at that, Thomas. Thank you so much for taking your time to explain this to us. Really interesting concept. I know it was first introduced to us by your colleague, Andrew McGuire, and uh, I wish you all the best on this, and I certainly want to check it out and, and learn more about it, and perhaps we can have an update sometime in the future. Thank you so much for being with us today. 